They're like, where's nipple should be? It's just like a tiny <laughs> set of hands. Uh, I should draw things like, oh, my hands are very large or something like that. Something Donald Trump would say. Uh, I have the largest hands of anyone. They're tremendous. Hello. I'm Soup Fin Shark. I'm Eileen Hummingbird. And this is another episode of Shark and Hummingbird. This is going to be episode three. Yes. <laughs> we are recording on what day? Oh god. Oh god, I never know. Every single time. 25th. It's May 25th. We have drinks. We have really gross looking green drinks. They look really healthy. They're absolutely not healthy at all. Tell us what's in these. The secret ingredient. Bia! <laughs> and matcha. As a reference from last episode, we have some beer. Um, I also briefly mentioned Dr. Stone in passing. So I found this recipe right out of Dr. Stone. It is from manga. No idea if it's good. It is literally just beer and matcha. Cheers. Tastes like kind of grassy beer. In Dr. Stone, he said, like, there are two flavors of maturity that their complexity or whatever combine to make a a perfectly whatever mature, refreshing drink, something, something. Do you agree with that? <laughs> I mean... If I was really thirsty, I'm sure this would refresh me. I just, it's just a very confusing drink. But then again, I do not know my beer, so this could be the most fabulous beer. The most amazing, incredible, subtle, nuanced thing, but my palate just isn't de well developed enough to understand it. It's a drink. It's not in edible, un undrinkable. I mean, it kind of just tastes like beer to me. Yeah, the matcha flavor is not too strong, I suppose. I like beer. Beer is good. All right, cool. Uh, <laughs> talk about something that's exciting. Um, so let's see, what was I going to talk about? I will mention that I finally am able to clear the pop stars KDA level on Expert Plus on Beat Saber. Um, also I got a, uh, a full combo on just the expert level for KDA. Oh, wow. Congrats. Full combo meaning that I hit all the notes. Woo. So, yes. Um, and if you don't know what Beat Saber is, um, it's really cool. It's a VR game where basically you have two lightsabers. One is originally red, but they have variations of that. One is blue and you have all these boxes coming at you that are either red or blue and they have arrows on them in which way you have to hit them so you have to hit your red boxes with your red saber in the direction of the arrow hit the blue boxes and with your blue saber in the direction of the arrow it's a lot of fun if you like rhythm games if you ever just wanted to be a jedi if you want to have something that you're pretending that you're doing some exercise play beat saber okay it does make you sweat quite a bit if you're on the harder levels I maintain that it is exercise. Fair enough. A little get some some cardio in there. It's no, not your your forearms will be really strong. It's just this Perhaps. happening. What's exciting in in your neck of the woods? Uh, nothing super personally exciting, but because of coronavirus, apparently wildlife everywhere is resurging to unprecedented levels because people aren't outside anymore. Things can recover. Nature is recovering. That's good. That's a good. tiny silver lining. Air is clearing up. I guess not anymore in China since they're easing up. But in other places, the visibility and air quality is at its peak. That's no good. cars, no people. You know, those uh, conspiracy theorists out there are going to say like, somebody invented coronavirus to try to to stop air pollution or something i mean it's like a very very short-term solution but i'm trying to find a silver lining <laughs> oh also again spoiler alert as always um 
we'll try to post the timestamps in the comments so you can skip around if you want to avoid spoilers. But yes, of course, any discussion of anything that we talk about is going to have spoilers. <laughs> so I got you into watching Survivor. So this past season of Survivor was season 40, um, which was a big monumental uh, season for them. They do two, se two seasons every year, so it's been 20 years. And what they did for this season was they brought in 20 of the past winners and the season was called Winners at War. They've never done that before. Um, you look at other reality shows, um, and a lot of them probably can't do anything similar to this. Um, yes, they've all had like sort of all-star seasons before where they've brought back other winners before, but never all winners, never this caliber of people. You did watch, I did... I watched one other have season. Have you watched one season before that, which was season 36? Six or seven? I forget it's now. Davis versus Goliath. Davis versus Goliath. How would you compare the two seasons? I feel like I was more invested in this season, just because I was personally more into Survivor after like watching one. I'm like, okay, I'm like into this kind of thing. And also, I feel like this one was it built it built up so that I was more excited at the end. Whereas the last one, I guess one of my favorite players was knocked out like right before like the big finale thing. So I was like really uninvested in like the final outcome of what happened last time. Mm -hmm. So I enjoyed this one more overall. That being said, any favorite players for this season? You have only seen one of these winners before. That's true. Which was Nick, Nick Wilson. Yeah. Um, oh my god, that was his last name I never knew. <laughs> yeah. Um, but any of the other players without having any previous biases before, did you like any of them in particular? I think I liked a lot of them. I liked like they just went up and down in my rankings, like, episode by episode, based on, like, what they did in the time. Mm -hmm. I feel like at one point, I was, like, really, really, like, oh, I, what, I forget his name, Tyson? Mm -hmm. The one with the peanut butter. Yeah, that's Tyson. When he, when he bought the peanut butter, I was like, you're my favorite. He's, it was amazing. I Peanut butter. Tyson's definitely always a character. Like, he's always fun to watch. Yes. He's oh kind of goodness. a joker, and, yeah. Definitely enjoy Tyson. And then, I mean, in the end, I was, like rooting for Tony because he was doing all those crazy th I guess I, I like people who are kind of oh oh I forgot uh what's his name the Asian dude I was Yo. so sad oh my god he was my favorite for a while oh I was so sad he tried to make a move too early <laughs> oh oh it's coming back to me it's coming <laughs> back to me it hurts me Yule's actually one of my favorite winners of all time oh really and of all the players here like a lot of the players a lot of these winners actually did come back for like second seasons or even third seasons. Yule had never come back before. Um, Nick hadn't come back before because he was such a recent winner. Uh, Wendell also never came back before because he was also a recent winner. Um, I think Michelle was also recent enough that she did not come back for a second time. I see. Um, but almost everyone else out there, I feel like, came back for at least a second time. Except for Yule. So I was really excited to see him play again. And... Um, but I was also nervous because I feel like a lot of people do kind of uh, rank him in pretty high regard and he was kind of known as the godfather on his season and, and I mean so is Boston Rob and Boston Rob also has a big target on his back um, and I mean likewise they both were eliminated fairly early because they were considered big threats and oh, it was so sad I was oh I was like, I was like, oh, he's gonna get this alliance with Sophie going, and he already has like this alliance with Nick and Wendell, and then they're yeah, like, yeah, I thought they were strong, and all this shit happened all of a sudden, and everything imploded really fast. <laughs> Nick felt more strongly to work with Wendell and Michelle than working with Yule or something like that, and you know, Wendell and Michelle kicked it, so they they dated they before and they they're not together anymore before before the season they did not break up on survivor that would have been interesting i guess it would have pulled in some ratings <laughs> speaking of couples though boston rob did play with his wife amber who is also a winner on survivor they have a good relationship i guess even through through all this survivor stuff and and whatnot as opposed to some other like a lot of other showmances that are created in like I mean, I guess in, like, Survivor, Big Brother, like, any other of these reality shows, there's always, like, some sort of showmance or whatever, and sometimes they work out, and sometimes they don't, but few of them rarely work out as well as Rob and Amber, I guess, so, you know. Do they meet on Survivor? Mm-hmm. 
That's so cute. Yeah. Were they on the same? So they were on the same season. Yes. The season that Amber won, I know Boston Rob was there, and they were both final two together. That's really cute. And then Amber won over Rob because I think everybody was like, they thought Rob was kind of like the bad guy, so they wanted to Amber to win. But mm-hmm. because he's played so much, he's regarded as one of the legends of Survivor, along with Sandra. <laughs> who was the only person who just like, she was on the edge of extinction. She, she noped just like, out of nope. there. But I mean, she made like a calculation. If she didn't think she was going to make it to the end, it wasn't worth it. Yeah, she made a bad move that ended her game this time. But it's not like, it's not like, oh, now suddenly she's like the worst player of all time. You know, it's, there's plenty of people, you know, worse than that, especially people who have never won before. And she's won it twice. So you can't take that away from her. It's true. Her, I don't know if it's her quote, but queen stays queen. That's, that's what people say. You know? <laughs> really? Mm-hmm. So we got to the final tribal council or even before that. But one of the biggest takeaways you had from that was some of the contestants hairstyles. Oh, oh yeah. I was really upset. <laughs> oh, like they go out and clearly when they're on these islands they can't groom themselves that well because they're out like foraging and doing all these physical things like the dudes all have like beards and the ladies have like whatever but when they come back they're they have like you see them in their natural not natural state but they're they're unnatural state. they're unnatural like the the way they would present themselves in society every day yeah so the ladies have like all the makeup and the guys have trimmed themselves in the way that they find most desirable i don't know but I feel like a lot of the people became, like, some of the ladies just straight up, I didn't recognize them. There was one lady who I hadn't seen very often, and I didn't recognize her because of her makeup. I was like, oh my god, who is this? Who is this person? Every time the camera panned her, I was like, random stranger, stranger danger. Denise. Oh god, yeah, her hair was, like, tied back all throughout Survivor. I mean, her change wasn't a bad change. I just didn't rec- like, at first, like, her hair was out, and there was this, like, curly bit on top, and I was like, is that is that fake hair? Where did all this hair come from? But apparently that's what happens when you just she just had all that hair. It was like really tied back, like super hard. So I just never knew that she had this much hair. Just like <sighs> the worst part was the dudes. Dudes are the ones you think they wouldn't change, but they make the worst choices. Like who? What's it, what's it? Jeremy was he the one? Jeremy. He he like shaved his head, and I was like, no, you looked fine with hair. Why are you suddenly bald? Oh God. But whatever. And then, oh my god, what's his face? What's his face? Ben. ben. Oh, I was like fond of Ben. I was like, oh, Ben, like, you're trying your best to, like, stick with your little alliance. Even you, you stuck up for, like, women's rights and you allowed yourself to be eliminated uh, to no avail. But it was a it was a nice gesture. But then you came back. He, he used to have a beard and the beard was fine. Like, uh, I'm, like, neutral to, like, beards are okay. But then he, like, shaved it. He shaved it so he only had this, like, strange, like handlebar mustache or something it was like he looked like a confederate general and i was like no you've aged 30 years why would you do this to yourself like he came out and i was like who is oh god but yeah i I was really upset you were also really offended by nick's hair oh god oh god yeah did he just slick it back i don't even remember what nick i erased it from my mind he normally he normally had it slicked back and then i believe he he parted it because he's normally like uh, an attorney or whatever. So I guess that's, however, his no, normal like. His hair is like really, really fabulous on the island. Like I didn't understand how Nick's hair was always like like this. Like it was it was parted, but it had this kind mm-hmm. of whoosh thing. Like I noticed because that doesn't seem like something you can maintain. It's probably because he was like he tied it with the buff or something. I assume. But there was a there was volume here. It was like yeah. whoosh. I was like wow, that's like really fantastic hair. I don't know how you're maintaining that. And then like the moment he has access to like normal hair products and grooming and whatever, his hair becomes like horrible. It was like really slick and oily, and I was like, you look terrible. What have you done? You looked fine on the island. Suddenly, oh god, oh my god, I forgot about Nick. Oh. That poor man. And then afterwards I felt really bad because they had spent so much time getting ready and beautiful and then they sat out there for this tribal council and it rained. It rained like... (sighs) And there was no covering for them so they all got wet anyways. It was just like they were back on the island. They might as well just come back in their survivor clothes. Yeah, that was like the least important part of Survivor and I was like the most passionate about it. I was like, why? No, I was also really passionate about the spy shack. Spy hut? The spy (laughs) Spy nest. nest. Yes. It like went through a lot of evolutions. 
I like the fact that it is branded. It's branded to him. It has a name. It has, like, evolutionary forms. And I like the fact that he takes damage by doing it. <laughs> like, he was up in his spy nest, and he was getting the information. He was like, yes, I've, I now know that this alliance exists. But also, he was up there for an hour, and he was, like, clinging there for a dear life. Like, please, please stop talking. I was like, wow, that's, like, dedication. And I'm also amused. I don't know. Your suffering, like, entertains me. So to be clear, this is uh, we're talking about Tony Vlachos, who who did end up winning the season, um, and the first season that he won, in which he did make this so-called spy shack, where he just got a bunch of like leaves and branches and camouflaged, and would like listen in on people's conversations so he could figure out sort of like what's the best move to make. He's this really like wild character, and he's just like he's really fun to watch. He's good TV, and he's got like a lot of energy, and he like just runs around like crazy and he like creates all these things that really amused me and i was like yes even though people know what your like mo is you can still pull it off that is super funny to me yeah i mean it is a reason why like before the act the season actually aired like a lot of people didn't think tony had like any chance of winning like this guy with all his crazy antics his chaotic play style but he's like oh i'm gonna start the season i'm gonna play like really down low like and it's gonna be sneaky and like nobody's gonna even really think about me and until like i really have to make a move and to his credit he he did just that and nobody like even put a single vote down for him so kudos to him let's see we watched uh we finished darwin's game which is an really? anime I guess it kind of ties into Survivor. You're like, you got to survive and They're Darwin's literally game. surviving, yes. Um, but yeah, when I first read like the synopsis for Darwin's Game, I thought it was going to be another sort of, um, what's what's the, the Hunger Games type of thing or mm-hmm. like Battle Royale type of thing where like they're all in this like huge game and like the last one to survive wins kind of deal. But apparently, I mean, you can kill people. But you don't have to kill people to win your your battle, right? And the show is different than like what I was expecting. Not necessarily in a bad way, but it just seems like oh, they're they're playing these this game. You um, select an opponent or whatever to do battle with, and I guess if you have enough points, if you lose, you lose a certain number of points, and if as long as you don't drop to zero, you still stay alive. Your opponent can still murder you normally, but as long as you don't drop to zero, you survive, and as long as your opponent doesn't just try to murder you, you survive. I guess that's that's the thing that originally I thought was like, oh, if you lose the battle, you're gonna you just straight up die, and that's why I thought it was gonna be like a Hunger Games style thing, and it didn't turn out to be that way. Um, if your points at zero, do you actually die? I can never tell if those block things are killing you or just transporting you somewhere for like a final stage yeah if you die you get pixelated essentially and you turn into these blocks and then you disappear so the answer is yes you okay. die but they also can teleport you to other locations With and the, you like, also very turn into similar blocks mechanism. yes so the premise is you get mm-hmm. um this mobile app um called darwin's game they refer to it as like dgame or whatever but um if you accept the invitation to play a D game, then this magical snake thing comes out of the phone and bites you, uh, granting you what's called, uh, what is it called? I forgot. I was, I was going to say semblance. That's Ruby. I was going to say stand. <laughs> <laughs> that's Jojo. Quirk is my hero. Um, you get the idea. It's a magical power. It's a sigil. It's a sigil. Oh, yes. Because they pronounce it sigil. Sigur in the show, which is what Matt Mercer, how Matt Mercer used to pronounce it before he was corrected. That's what it looks like, okay? It does look like that, to be fair. But I think it is supposed to be sigil. Um, anyway, it's basically a superpower. Everybody gets a superpower, and some of them are, like, invisibility. Um, some of them are better for combat, like... Um, Controlling all wire-like substances? Yeah, or... Or like Ice, pyrokinesis, water. or yeah, and some of them are just like, oh, I can detect if you're telling the truth or not. I feel like the main character's power is not 
well explained at the moment because they're like oh my god this is like a, a new power that we've never like realized before it's like groundbreaking and amazing and i'm sure it can be but i don't i don't know the limits of it all he uses it for is like he creates objects that he's like handled before i guess so he just uses it to manifest just lots of guns which is useful or bombs or knives yeah just like small weapons i'm like what what is the limit to what you can produce are you creating mass I'm always like a little bit like mm, by mass creating things. I'm like it's, it's got to come from somewhere. Uh, so it starts out just like oh, like there's individual battles, but then it turns into more of a like hey, let's form a, like a clan, like form a team together, and then like the game evolves from like having individual bouts to like having a special, a specifically planned event by the like creator of the game, and then i guess slowly they build their team up together they form more teammates and stuff it actually kind of um gives me what's that what's that other series called air gear did you ever watch air gear no i didn't it kind of gives me air gear vibes where they like form this like team together and they like they're also crows in air gear they're crows these guys are ravens they're sunset okay, fine, ravens fine they're still black birds cool. oh god and the goal of the protagonist is to go and like find the the creator of d game and stop it once and for all so that people don't have to die all these meaningless deaths or whatever but, mm-hmm. but yeah i don't know i mean that still also kind of has a, a hunger games vibe to it right because she's like i'm gonna go and like stop the whatever it was that's... jump straight to book three of hunger games <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> But that's like that's that's what the main goal was, right? To mm-hmm. end the actual Hunger Games. It's kind of like that. I don't know. It was just it was a fun, fun action y shonen. Yeah, that was a nice romp. I mean I liked it, but it wasn't like, oh my god, I'm so invested, like there better be a second season, like I I cannot live without this. It was just fun. Fair enough. But if you're bored, you got more things to check out. Yes. I mean, it's, like, definitely, like, above average. Like, I enjoyed watching it every week or however frequently it came out. Mm-hmm. Or maybe I did think it was good, and I just, like, my rating of it has gone down so much because I hated the antagonist so much. I was just really annoyed by Wang. Wang. The snake guy? Yeah, I don't know. There's some antagonists that you hate, but it's, like, a productive hate because, like, wow, like, he is so evil and he's whatever. But him, I was just annoyed. Every time he was on screen, I was just, like... <sighs> When will you die? I want, like, an, the next big bad to come because you are uninteresting and annoying. <laughs> and his, like, mouth design just, like, really creeps me out. It was like, oh, and I was like, oh. He had these two piercings that were supposed to look like snake fangs. But they didn't. They looked like he was, like, a large kangaroo or something. I was really upset. I don't know. I thought it was all right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got a snake vibe from him. I mean, I did, but... Not because of that. I don't know. I didn't like his mouth is like the takeaway from this. Okay. Maybe it was snake-like, but I didn't like the snake mouth either. Okay. Maybe give him a new character design and maybe you'll No, you'll I wanted to die. More. Like there were other antagonists, like bigger bads. And once they come, I'll be happier. I guess since you're drinking that matcha, we can talk about something else matcha that we made. Mm-hmm. Made, um, like, a creme brulee with matcha in it. What I really liked it. I mean, I am a huge fan of creme brulee. I never really had them before we made the first one. But now I'm like really obsessed. I really like them. Although, I thought the creme brulee part tasted good, but we had so much, so many difficulties with that top part for some reason. Yeah, the sugar layer didn't quite turn out the way we wanted to. Yeah, so we'd probably have to dump like two tablespoons or something. No, tablespoons is a lot, man. Teaspoons. No, I'm just like, that's what I'm saying, like, when you put in normal amounts, it just, like, sinks into the top of the creme brulee. So when you torch it, like, a tiny, tiny, like, little crust hardens. And then when you eat it, you can feel the sugar underneath that was, like, absorbed into, like, the top layer <laughs> of the thing. I'm like, why? I was, like, thinking, should I dab it with, like, a paper towel? Is it the moisture? It just wasn't as aesthetically pleasing, but it tasted amazing. Yeah, the actual, like, custardy part was, was fine. Yeah. So... I don't actually care that much about the taste of, like, the sugar crack. I'm yeah. like, oh, it's a nice, like, texture, but... 
it's the the novelty of the dessert. Right? <laughs> Breaking that. I mean, I guess it's not that dramatic. It's like tink tink. I like how that's your sound effect for everything. Okay, everything has to come with that amount of force for it to be relevant to me. No one needs a little dinky thing. But yes, so there was that. And then... Pizza? Pizza! Yeast! Yeast came! I mean, we talked about it last (laughs) time, but I'll never get over the joy of this yeast. I am still looking every time I go out to the market to see, like, oh, maybe the yeast is, like, in local markets. Oh, no, there's still no yeast anywhere. Like, if we hadn't gotten this yeast from Ohio, we'd still be in this, like, tragic desert wasteland of no yeast. You also made a nice uh, sweet potato filling so that we could stuff the crust Korean style. Yeah, I had... Like, I went to Korea and there was a Domino's... I still remember it because I don't really, I'm like, oh, eh, about Domino's in America. But in Korea, I was like, wow, I like really want to go to this Domino's again because they had stuffed the crust with sweet potatoes. And I'm like an like a fan, like a fanatic for like sweet potato products or sweet potato, sweet potatoes in general. I just like eating sweet potatoes. It's, it's kind of a problem. But yeah, so I really wanted to have that taste again without having to fly for 13 hours. And so we bought some sweet potatoes and we made the sweet potato filling and we filled the crust with them. It was good. Yeah. Like potatoes. Although the recipe, we made like so much sweet potato like crust filling. We have enough for like ten pizzas. We had a. Uh, we made a Hawaiian pizza with pineapple and and ham. Mm-hmm. I don't know if our our viewers out there enjoy pineapple on pizza. Yeah, you just lost like every single viewer. They're like, no, we can no longer condone the actions of this these people. Let us know in the comments if you condone pineapple on pizza or not. I'm sure, we'll spark a discussion. <laughs> oh my god, it's like... So some other fun things we did this week, or past couple weeks, whatever. Oh no. We, we played Dominion. Oh no. <laughs> uh, so... For th- <laughs> go on, go on. If you're not familiar with Dominion, it's technically a card game, um... And it's a deck building game, which means that both players or all players, if you're playing with more than two players, uh, start with the exact same deck. You get a chance to buy cards from a supply pool, add them to your deck, and then eventually once the game ends per uh, whatever conditions there are, um, the player with the most points in their deck wins. There's the base set, there's a bunch of different expansions, you randomly select each game which... um, which cards you want to include in the supply pile. Uh, So every game is a little bit different. Um, There's online versions. If you don't actually have like a bajillion physical cards like Derek does. Since you were laughing so hard earlier, please, please uh, explain your, your thoughts about this game. Oh my God. I mean, it's really fun, but I was only laughing because I'm really, really bad at it. There's a little bit of a learning curve to it. I mean, I hope so. Uh, uh, I feel like for at least two of the games, I was like, my goal is to just buy one province. <laughs> it's not even to win. I'm just like, please. And it was so sad. The, the first time we were playing, when that was my goal, you were like, oh, I'll leave one for you. It's not even like, oh, I achieved my goal. He just like threw me one out of pity. I mean, to be fair... I I wasn't able like I wasn't able to like buy up all of them like there was <laughs> I couldn't stop you from buying. I organically one. <laughs> bought one from. Uh no, but it's really fun. It's just that every time we start a new thing, I'm like, mm-hmm. oh my god, these cards, and I always like every game I misunderstand one card. And also like you're like, oh, I have this like strategy and my deck is super lean. And it's like, I'm just like, oh, how are the cards? Guide me now. I make this purchase. I play this card. And you're like, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't know. I have like 500 cards in my deck and none of them are working. I mean, to be fair, it's it's uh, probably like a pretty common beginner's mistake where you're just like, I got to buy a card every turn. You know, I mean, you do kind of want to buy a card every turn, but it's just like... A useful card. You want a useful card. Well, the thing is, like, you were constantly adding cards to your deck, which made it bigger, meaning that the chance of drawing the exact card you want was lower. Um, whereas I was trying to make my deck smaller, <laughs> which means that I am constantly drawing my whole deck essentially every turn. Yeah, basically. So... Yeah, it's 
like I said, it's a learning curve. You got to kind of figure out what, um, you know, what the best cards are to buy, what, and I guess the timing to buy them is important because sometimes you'll buy a card early on and it's, it's pretty garbage early on, but maybe later game, once you have specific cards in your deck, that card is going to become a lot more valuable. I think you won one time. That's because you were like, I'm going to try this like random strategy because it means nothing means anything. <laughs> and I was like, oh, thank the Lord. <laughs> I'd consider it like a good gateway game. Like if you don't play very many modern <clears throat> board games, like it's a it's a fun game to like pick up to kind of like start off with. And um, and it, it apparently won this Spiel de Yaris um, in like 2009, according to according to what the box says, um, which is, uh, this big gaming award, um, board, board gaming award. I actually don't actually know all the details about it. I just know it's an award. It's and It's important. It, it, and it, impressive. Yeah. Any, like, Spiel the Yaris nominees or winners are, are basically certified good games, so you can't go wrong with that. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's time. Oh, no. For this week's fun. So... Since we're having issues with editing, or specifically, I guess, exporting gameplay video, um, until we have a solution to that, which unfortunately may be a while, um, we're going to try to figure out something fun we can add to our videos other than just us talking. So, inspired by the Drawfee channel, we are... They actually draw. Uh, yeah, they but... They actually draw. Okay, go on. You draw well. I... I'll go first because I'm garbage. Um, we can show every everyone is gonna be garbage when they're drawing with their finger on a tablet. Okay, we don't have we don't have professional, nice drawing equipment and stuff. Um, so we're gonna make do with this crappy app on my on my iPad. Um, so we're just gonna draw. We're gonna give each other a Pokemon and we're gonna have to draw it. And we're gonna pick Pokemon that maybe we've never heard of and we'll have to see what we come up with so okay i have some options i don't know whether you've heard of them if they're from sun and moon or sorry if they're from sword and shield i have no idea what they are well you're drawing cursal okay give me give me a little bit of a uh, of backstory for cursal backstory i don't know it has an ectoplasm that's the result of a long and continuous process absorbing spirit energy from other creatures the energy now pours out of its shell due to it overflowing. The ectoplasm causes anyone who touches it to rapidly stiffen. Mm. They gather together under a full moon and send their branches into the sky. It's a ritual of release, shedding the energy they've gathered from others. What's the point of gathering it? It looks like a neuron to me. <laughs> That's why I picked it. I feel like it's paying homage to my field of study. Okay. It's like a neuron that's emerging. A ghost, it's the ghost of a neuron that's emerging from half of an egg. Okay, cool. So I, I'm guessing it's a ghost type. Maybe. Okay, I don't know what site you're using, but... I was on a random <laughs> Pokemon generator. Just go to Bulbapedia, man. All right, it's a coral um, Pokemon. Okay. It's not a ghost or a neuron, I guess. Okay, Um. and being seeing that I don't know how a neuron looks, we're going to... We're just going to go with, so it's a coral. It's a wonderful sight to behold. Oh, yes. This is going to be a very wonderful sight to behold once I'm done with it. It'll be beautiful. So here's my thought process. I'm basically ignoring, like, everything you just said. And... <laughs> And because it sounds like Ursula, it I'm doesn't look like Ursula. Hold, first of all, just I know I'm a crappy drawer, but is but, it levitating its staff? Because it's clearly not holding it. <laughs> okay, calm yourself. <laughs> I just can't draw. Also, doesn't Ursula have eight legs? <laughs> calm down. We're getting to that. Okay, so... She also doesn't have a staff. Yeah, but it's not Ursula, it's Cursula, right? So it's like... What did I just do? It's it's like a mage. It's like some sort of 
sort of sorcerer and <clears throat> so that's why it has this staff oh god i don't I told you they're merging from like a shell right no i missed that part um <laughs> so it's kind of this it's gonna be this coral looking thing have you seen what a coral looks like <laughs> It looks exactly like that. It's bumpy. Okay. It's not so, not something that's easy to draw. Okay. okay, fair. I'll give you that. Okay. And we're going to be like it's it's a bright colored coral. So so it's going to be like It's a ghostly coral. Red. Fine. It's purple. Okay. It's going to be this this isn't purple, but it's going to be this color. <laughs> it's black. <laughs> it's not black. It's like a blue. <laughs> Fine, fine. Let me find find a better color here. It's it's this kind of purpley color, okay? So we're gonna give it a little a little sash here, a little belt, and this this belt is is going to include little little oct what did I just do? Little octopus tentacles and and this is the part that looks like Ursula. You see? You see? It looks like it's doing the hula. <laughs> it's Ursula's a copyrighted character, so, you know, the uh, Pokemon company, um, Game Freak, they can't can't copy it straight one for one, so they got to they got to, you know, make a little bit uh, of some concessions. <laughs> compromise uh let's see ursula's got big boobs so we gotta include include that oh god um they're they're gonna be like lumps <laughs> because it's coral okay he's got so, a tumor <laughs> two tumors just bulging from its chest so let's see it's merging from a shell you said so so we're gonna do do this um we're gonna give it a little a little hat thing that looks like a shell oh god in like the three seconds i wasn't looking at it it, it became more beautiful <laughs> now here's an important distinction whoops is it cursula or corsola it's cursula that evolves from corsola okay because i actually think i know vaguely what a what a corsola looks like i love how you're like not giving it a face until the bitter end Remember, it has a sad and screaming and pained expression. Fine. How's that? It's so. It will never leave me. <laughs> you want to inflict that upon the rest of the world? They aren't ready, let me assure you. No one is ready. Alright. Show me what this thing looks like. This is what it looks like. Oh, okay, okay. Looks exactly like a ghostly neuron coming out of the shell of Corsola. Now that we have my crappy drawing, it's your turn. <laughs> Make a crappy drawing? Hey, oh, God. You're, you're a lot better drawer than I am. All right, so this Pokemon... What is its name? You may have seen this Pokemon before because it, it was memed pretty heavily. Is Young Goose. What? Okay. So, I'll tell you a couple things. One, it's known as the loitering Pokemon. But I feel like this is a very bad description. Because, in reality, it is basically Donald Trump fused with a weasel. A general weasel-based body. That looks like a snake. It's okay. It's a snake weasel. A snake. Snake. It is a snake. But it has a flowing toupee. Oh, God. It looks like a pastry. <laughs> it does. I forgot what his hair looks like. I spend a lot of time trying not to think about his hair. Oh, but if it's fused with him, this is the wrong color. It has to be orange. The whole weasel has to be orange. Let's start over. The weasel has to be orange. Would you like a another little description of this guy? Sure. Young Goose has a voracious appetite and is always hungry. 
It is able to digest food quickly. Its strong teeth allow it to crush and consume the hardest of objects. Okay, we've got to start over now. God, it's like my worst nightmare now. <laughs> it's coming for me. <laughs> I, like, I like where you're going with that. I did not tell you this, but I feel like you've already incorporated it. And the much of its body is dominated by its stomach. Well, that's going well. Yeah. It needs more chins. Oh, I like how you gave it the little, little belly button thing there. It's the little details that matter. Oh, it's so hard to aim with my finger. Is that its ear? Yes. Are you going to tell me something about its ear? No. I was like, it looks kind of like a human ear. It's Donald Trump's ear. That's fair. I don't know why that that hand only has two fingers. I was too lazy to draw the third one. Oh you're, god. You're doing well. It's getting worse. Okay, it's just gonna have a really misshapen hand. There's nothing I can do about it. I mean, does Donald Trump have a really misshapen hand? Oh no, it needs tinier hands! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> but I kind of like the hands it has right now, so it's going to have an extra set of really tiny hands. I feel like he has, Donald Trump has this thing where his, the, underneath his eye is like really, really like a dark orange eye shadow or something. Oh god. He can just have a single orange bag underneath his eye. I feel like you don't need to fill yours in. Okay, because it's already colored with different it's, things. It's already good enough. Like, this is miles better than whatever I drew. So I like channeled my passion. I feel like, oh no, oh, oh god, I can't, I can't get rid of the hair because the hair is really iconic, but I feel like I need, I need something here. All right, so what what are you adding now exactly? You'll see. Oh boy, his half his body is just gonna be red. <laughs> Donald Trump had a really bad sunburn one day, <laughs> and he just never recovered. I can't undo. All right, that's fine. It's lovely. Yes. I think you've encompassed this Donald Trump weird rodent thing very well. Young goose. <laughs> young goose. <laughs> yeah. All right, you ready for, for what it actually looks like? It looks like this. I should have made its teeth point here. Why well, doesn't it have a mega hat? <laughs> I've never seen that before. I guess it's not angry enough. It's okay. It's okay. I mean, I'm pretty sure the creators of Pokemon weren't like, hey, let's create a Donald Trump Pokemon. But as soon as everyone saw this, they're like, oh my god, it's just Donald Trump. I guess technically it's a mongoose. but It does look more like a mongoose than mine does. Mine looks like it crawled out of a vat. I, I really appreciate your tiny little hands, though. <laughs> that, that was a good addition. Yeah, I love how like the teeth are like in the wrong perspective too, because I couldn't actually like my finger was like too thick to draw. Oh well, it's whatever. All right. Half of it is red. It's it's, okay. it's still still a million times better than than my Cursula thing. So your Cursula was so beautiful. It was like uh, a hula, you, it was like a hula hooping human. I mean, at least, <laughs> like a, at least dancing, yours, sorry. yours was like kind of close to what the actual Pokemon. Oh, it looked does like. not look anything like the actual uh, Pokemon. No, no, it does. It's got the hair. It's got it's got like the rodent body. It's just this this. Your your young goose ate a bit too much and had a mutation that grew extra arms. That's that's basically it. Otherwise, the very large hands. Yeah. Otherwise, it's perfect. And it found it found this maga hat. That that was the reason that it mutated. This maga hat contained hey. chemicals that grew extra set of little tiny hands, and I guess it probably made it larger. So because this maga hat is so small compared to it, <laughs> this thing <laughs> in the real world would be ginormous. Um, Oh but gosh. but yes, um, I I think that's gonna do it for us. That's our that's our show. Okay. Um, so again, sorry we we don't have gameplay for you, uh, but you know I hope you en enjoyed our derpy drawings and, um, you know, if you want to give us a give us a like, subscribe, comment, what other fun things we can do until we get some some gameplay up and running um yeah whatever send us send us suggestions uh 
you know, all the, all that good stuff. Yeah. Anything else? Nope. <laughs> all right. Then, as always, uh, remember to, to stay healthy, stay safe, wash your hands, do some exercise. Don't die. She's just like, oh, my tongue is out. I'm going to <laughs> slice. I'm, I'm slicing you. I'm slicing your friends. <laughs> yes, that's exactly how he talked. Exactly. And also.